In a world fueled by caffeine and creativity, where the aroma of freshly brewed coffee lingers in the air, one name stands tall, proudly serving billions of cups across the globe. And there definitely is a tale brewing behind every sip, secrets hidden within the steam. Welcome to a journey that unveils the untold story of Starbucks, from humble beginnings to a grand empire. This is a cup full of Starbucks history you won't want to miss, an adventure that will leave you craving your next espresso fix. Hello friends, welcome to BizBuzz, a channel purely dedicated to the untold stories behind the world's most successful businesses. Join us as we uncover the secrets and strategies of visionary entrepreneurs and discover how they turned their dreams into reality. Well, Starbucks is more than just a familiar name. Practically woven into the fabric of our daily lives, where it transcends being a well-known coffee brand to become a symbol of familiarity and ubiquity. And it's hard to fathom a world without Starbucks for the younger generation. Even some older individuals might struggle to recollect a time before Starbucks cafes graced every major street corner. So let's step into a world where beans turn into gold and a humble cup of joe becomes an icon. It's time to uncover the mesmerizing tale of Starbucks, where passion, innovation, and a sprinkle of caffeine combine to create a brewing empire that has taken the world by storm. From the secret recipes that tantalize taste buds to the baristas who craft liquid masterpieces, every sip holds a story waiting to be savored. Just grab your favorite mug and brace yourself as we dive into the depths of espresso dreams and discover the surprising secrets brewing behind those cafe doors. So to start with, let's see when was Starbucks founded? In the vibrant city of Seattle, Washington, back in 1971, three ambitious individuals named Jerry Baldwin, Zeve Siegel, and Gordon Bowker came together to lay the foundation of what would become the renowned Starbucks. Their paths had converged during their time as students at the University of San Francisco. Interestingly, their journey intertwined with that of another esteemed coffee company, as they were fortunate enough to receive coffee roasting lessons from none other than Alfred Peet, the visionary behind the beloved Peet's Coffee and Tea. And when it came time to deciding on a name for their venture, the trio engaged in a spirited brainstorming session, challenging themselves to think of as many words starting with ST as possible. Bowker, being the owner of an advertising agency, held the belief that ST names had a special resonance with successful brands and companies. Amidst the plethora of ideas, one name stood out, Starbucks, inspired by the unforgettable character from Herman Melville's literary masterpiece, Moby Dick. And thus, the captivating tale of Starbucks began forever etching its mark in history. Inspired by the remarkable achievements of Pete's coffee and tea, the founders of Starbucks were emboldened to shape their own business model centered around offering exceptional coffee beans and equipment. In fact, Pete's became the initial supplier of green coffee beans to Starbucks, serving as a crucial catalyst for their aspirations. To embark on their caffeinated journey, the enterprising partners procured a pre-owned roaster all the way from Holland. Baldwin and Bowker, Fueled by their passion and guided by Alfred Pete's invaluable roasting techniques, fearlessly delved into the realm of experimentation, crafting unique blends and tantalizing flavors. And by the dawning of the 1980s, Seattle witnessed the blossoming of four Starbucks stores distinct from their competitors due to the unparalleled freshness of their roasted coffees. These establishments became beacons for connoisseurs seeking top quality brews. However, as the tale unfolded, Zev Siegel, one of the original founders, chose to explore different avenues and ventured towards other passions, leaving behind Baldwin and Bowker as the remaining dynamic duo. Stepping into the role of company president, Baldwin would guide Starbucks towards even greater horizons. Let's see the rise of an empire now, getting towards the Howard Schultz era. In the year 1981, a fortuitous encounter unfolded when Howard Schultz, then working as a sales representative for Hammerplast, a Swedish company supplying kitchen equipment and housewares to Starbucks, took notice of the substantial orders placed by the coffee giant. Intrigued by the magnitude of their business, Schultz decided to pay a visit and witness the magic firsthand. Mesmerized by what he experienced, he resolved to embark on a professional journey with Starbucks, ultimately joining the team as the head of marketing in 1982. Schultz astutely observed that some first-time patrons felt a bit overwhelmed by their limited knowledge of the intricacies of fine coffees. 
Determined to bridge this gap, he collaborated closely with store employees, cultivating customer-friendly sales skills and crafting informative brochures that simplified the exploration of Starbucks' diverse offerings. However, it was during the spring of 1983 when Destiny beckoned Schultz to Milan for an international housewares show that his grandest vision for the future of Starbucks took shape. Immersed in the vibrant cafe culture of Italy, he was captivated by the countless coffee houses adorning the streets of Milan alone, numbering an impressive 1,500. This awakening sparked an idea that would transform Starbucks from a modest regional enterprise into a formidable national coffee house chain through rapid store expansion. Yet, to Schultz's chagrin, his proposal faced resistance from Baldwin and Bowker, the founders of Starbucks. They harbored reservations about straying too far from their tried-and-true business model. Their vision for Starbucks was to remain devoted to the sale of coffee and equipment, eschewing the path of becoming a cafe that dabbled in serving espressos and cappuccinos. After failing to convince Baldwin and Bowker to embrace his cafe concept, Schultz left Starbucks in 1985 and started his own successful coffee chain called Il Giornale. In 1987, Baldwin and Bowker decided to sell Starbucks, and Schultz seized the opportunity to purchase the company with the support of investors. He merged all his operations under the Starbucks brand and focused on the cafe concept, expanding the chain from fewer than 20 stores to over 100 in just four years. Starbucks experienced rapid growth after going public in 1992, expanding internationally and becoming the largest coffee house chain in the world. By the end of the 1900s, Starbucks had thousands of locations in numerous countries and an impressive revenue. Time to see how Starbucks drink sizes got their names? Well, Starbucks employs a unique sizing system that combines Italian and English words, often perplexing even loyal customers. The available sizes globally include short 8 ounces, tall 12 ounces, grande 16 ounces, venti 24 ounces, and trenta 31 ounces. This distinctive nomenclature, viewed as a prime example of corporate language manipulation, creates a disparity between the names and the actual drink volumes. The roots of this system can be traced back to Starbucks visionary founder Howard Schultz, who sought to introduce the Italian coffeehouse culture to America. In his first coffee shop, Il Giornale, Schultz offered three sizes, short, tall, and grande, later adding the larger venti size. However, despite its unconventional nature, Starbucks' sizing system has become an unmistakable trademark of the brand. Moving on to their global presence, Starbucks made its first foray into the international coffee market in 1996 with the opening of its Tokyo, Japan store, followed by another in the Philippines in 1997. This marked the beginning of a rapid expansion journey. Starbucks quickly expanded to countries like the United Kingdom, Mexico, and Australia. Through strategic acquisitions, including Seattle's Best Coffee, Torrefazione Italia, and Pete's Coffee, Starbucks further enhanced its global presence and production capabilities by 2003. And by the year 2004, Starbucks had firmly established itself with over 7,000 stores across numerous countries. This swift expansion showcased Starbucks' transformation from a North American chain to a global phenomenon, solidifying its position as a dominant player in the international coffee market. Then they saw a brief interruption. During the global recession in 2008, Starbucks faced challenges as it announced the closure of 600 locations, a significant number that would have represented nearly half of its stores a decade earlier. Despite the blow, the recession proved to be a temporary setback, as economies started to recover, Starbucks swiftly rebounded, experiencing a remarkable recovery and reaching new heights. Like a resilient phoenix, the company regained momentum and firmly re-established its dominance in the coffee industry, flourishing once again. Let's see how Starbucks is doing today. Unlike others, Starbucks does not operate through franchising. Each Starbucks store is owned by the parent company and operates under a license agreement. As of September 2022, Starbucks had a staggering presence of 32,660 stores in 83 countries, showcasing exponential growth and its immense impact on the coffee industry. However, sustaining such growth rates is unlikely, and Starbucks has set a target of 55,000 locations worldwide in the next decade. Let me also tell you that, with its annual revenue already surpassing a billion dollars, Starbucks revenue for the 12 months ending March 31, 2023 was $33.998 billion, 
an 8.52% increase year over year. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. We hope you liked the video as much as we like making it for you. If you do, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Feel free to leave a comment below and let us know your opinion on this caffeinated journey through Starbucks. Grande, venti, o trenta. What would you like? Until next time, stay tuned and don't miss anything on BizBuzz. Thank you.